Today, you are going to paint a beautiful, impressionistic style, abstract, floral, still life painting. We are going to begin the process with something messy and turn it into something beautiful. Here are some examples of my work, as well as other artists I admire who have also participated in this process of impressionistic floral style art. And I'm here to teach you today how to create your own beautiful floral design. Here's a quick snapshot of the process of how this project will start where it will look in the middle and how it will end up. To begin this process, you will need a piece of paper. You can also use your canvas on the easel or you can use the small piece of paper. You can also do all three at the same time. I would recommend that. Um, what you'll need in your plate is colors that are cool. The cool color family is greens, purples, and blues. So it could be a light purple, a dark purple, a light green, a turquoise green. You can mix these colors up. They just need to be cool. So that means no yellows, no reds, or no, no oranges. Before we start painting our paper, I want you to pick a word that represents you, maybe a scripture, something that you want to see, a hopeful word. Um, a word you want to define this year, something that is going to be infused and a part of your painting. So keep it positive. For me, I chose the words promise and hope. I believe this year is going to be your promises fulfilled and hope renewed. So that I want you to put right now on the first layer of your painting. Once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and do some fun painted paper. There's no wrong way to do this. Basically have fun. Put the paint on the paper. You can splatter, you can splash, you can um, make lines and designs. You can do anything with this background as long as you stay in the cool color family, which is blue, green, purple. You can add white, you can mix it up, you can do some scraping, splattering, have fun. That's the goal. Once you're done with one piece, you can move on to a smaller piece. Once you're done um, with that, you can move on to your canvas. And this is a base layer. Remember, don't use the pink, red, yellow, or orange yet. Now that you're done with that first layer, we're going to add the second layer of messy paint. So right now it's going to look really confusing and messy. It's not going to make sense. But what you're going to do now is layer on even more color, which will also make it look even more messy. So life is messy, things can get messy, but it doesn't mean they're not going to be beautiful. Taking the colors that are warm, pinks, reds, yellows, um, put bright colors on there if you want, blot them in, splot them in, uh, splat them in, but you're going to fill some of those areas with those warm colors now. So these are really going to be the base of the flower. So if you want to paint a lot of pink flowers, then I would add pinks in there. If you want a really bright, brilliant red flower, then put some red in there. If you're really focused on yellows, add some yellow. Once you feel like you're in a good place to stop, set that paper to the side or your canvas to the side and let it dry. Before we draw flowers on our painting, I want to take a look at flowers in real life. Now, they're just a collection of shapes and lines that come together. We're doing this loosely, so it doesn't have to look perfect. Take a look at a rose. All that a rose really is is a lot of wavy lines wrapped in and in and in on each other. This daisy is a circle with lines that build on each other. They just layer and they stack. Roses have petals that come outward and come inward. So all of the flowers that you see here 
are just a collection of lines and shape. They don't have to look perfect when we draw them in, it's just an idea of what maybe the flower could be. So don't focus on making this very realistic, keep it loose and it's just an idea. The first flower I'm going to draw is a daffodil. A daffodil is done upside down. First, I draw a wavy squiggly oval. Then I draw an in on top of it or a U shape. I go on the bottom and connect it with other oval shapes. So flip it over and you'll see the dandelion. Three little lines in the middle and you can add shape to the side if you want. Now for the next flower just draw a simple dot in the middle and loose curved lines coming around the small dot. These are very simple tiny um, flowers. The next flower could be a daisy. In the middle is an oval or you could even make it a larger circle. Have the petals coming downward, you would just build them on each other, do a curved line, maybe four curved lines in the front, and if you want to build the petals, just continue that motion until you reach the center. If you want to do a very quick flower, just draw a circle in the middle and very loose petals going around. A very loose flower. This could be a peony, this could be a tulip. Draw a U shape that uh, comes out almost like a cup. Then take those lines inward on the side, go behind and create some lines behind and three lines in the middle. That makes it look like a cupped shape flower. Maybe you wanna draw a flower that has a lot of those um, sprayed out petals. This is just a layering on top of each other. So start with the back layer and draw curve lines all the way in the back, then go in front, curve lines in the front, and then smaller and go smaller as you go down. So I'm just building on those curved lines until it looks full. And then once you filled up the top, you can have some coming downward. Next could be a tulip or a rose. Draw a cup U shape and then coming down on the sides, bring in lines curved, coming downward, and then go to the top and connect those curved lines and a little dark spot in the middle and three lines coming up. This could be a tulip and without the lines, you could even draw a curved line more in the middle and that could even turn into a rose. Here are two leaves. Leaves are just loose shapes. You don't have to make them perfect. As you begin to search and find those flowers in your painting, I can help you one-on-one -on -one to really hone in on the petals and the designs that you want. Are several examples of how I make vessels or vases. You start at the top with an oval and then bring lines coming down and on the bottom connect them with a curved line. Sometimes I keep a large opening and before I fill it with flowers. And then a shadow is always cast on the opposite side where the light is not reflecting from. Another example of how to make a vessel, oval on top, oval on bottom, oval in the middle and connect them with lines. Oval on top, oval on the bottom, oval in the middle, or just a curved line on the bottom. Oval on top, oval on the bottom, oval in the middle. 
Now that we've taken a crash course in drawing flowers and vessels, I want you to go on a flower hunt in your painting. Your goal is to find odd numbers, maybe one flower, three flowers, five, or seven. You can add more if you want, but it's good to start simple. So I'm going in and my goal is to find three flowers out of this messiness, find three beautiful things. So also think about what are three beautiful things you love about you, and we're gonna draw that out of the painting. So the first flower I found is probably, I'm going to turn this into a very small flower at the bottom. The next thing I'm going to do is draw a stem using my piece of chalk. Now chalk is forgiving, it can erase. If you make a mistake, just rub it out with your hand. So I found my first flower. If you're not sure how to map or draw those in, that's what I'm here for. I can help you find those flowers in your painting. Now I think I really like what's going on with the yellows and the pinks, but I'm going to pick this flower right above to be a, a, another flower. So I'm going to put just a circle in the middle and loosely sketch out the petals of that next flower. So I found my second flower. And to keep things balanced, I'm going to add a third flower. And you'll see as this painting progresses, I added a fourth and then to balance it out, I added a fifth at the very end just using paint. So you can always change and add as you go. I'm picking that flower over here, this little white pinky spot, to be a tulip. I add a, a leaf. If you don't like it, erase it. So you're just going to map in and find those flowers. Then draw your vessel. I'm going around with an oval. I'm coming down and around. Now again, if you're not used to drawing this way, oval on top, oval on the bottom, oval in the middle. And a line for the horizon will be behind it. Once I've mapped my flowers in and I like what I see, kind of get a good idea of where I've mapped everything in. Don't forget to start adding some leaves. Where would you want to add those leaves? I'm drawing those in using chalk. Now it's not going to look like a leaf yet, but it will. So I have three flowers. And I think I like the yellow bits going on here, so I'm going to make that be an elongated flower going up. And I just did circles, and the stem is going into the water there. So I have four flowers, and I'm going to add a fifth later, because once I look at the painting, I notice it's not quite done. And then I add a oval in the middle. So you're just going to block in with chalk where you want your flowers to be. Now that you've mapped your picture in, we want to cover things up with a light gray. Mix in your palette a black and white until you get it the gray that you'd like. If you want it darker, add more black. If you want it lighter, add more white. Cover up everything that is not mapped in with chalk. You can do this for the entire background or you can choose another color if you'd like. The best colors to use are very light because it's a nice contrast against the bright colors that you use for your flowers. You don't want to distract from the flowers, but you want the background colors to be sort of soft and light, like a very nice grayish light blue. Turquoise seems to work well. I'm also adding a little black to cast a shadow. If the light is coming from the right top side of the paper, which in this example it is, it's going to be a little darker, the opposite side of where the sun or the light is hitting the plant. Now I want you to go in either with a light gray, a turquoise, don't pick a color that matches everything else in the background, but pick the color that you like. Try to avoid anything that matches the flowers. You want a nice contrast. Go in and block in everything, which means cover up everything that you did not trace in with chalk. You want to cover it up. So now you're going to start to see those flowers pop out that you traced in with chalk, and it's not ready quite yet. Take your chalk and fill in maybe empty spaces that look like they need something there. So I'm going in and defining the stem of the top flower. I'm going in and just correcting things. I'm adding things. I'm adding a stem here. I'm building on the painting with chalk. 
So once I've added a couple of things in, I'm going to go in after I use the chalk with oil pastel and soft pastel, soft chalk pastel. I had an oval in the middle with my chalk. This is gonna be the water. I add highlights. I open up my box of oil pastels. Now these color palette is limited, but you have many color options at your table. And you're going to go in and pick and highlight things. So what I'm going to do is fast forward this video and I'm going to show you what I chose to highlight, what I chose to add, what I chose to darken. You're going to add these colors in with pastel and chalk. So you're going to pull and bring out the colors now with chalk and oil pastel. You can keep it loose if you want or you can make it more defined. Adding oil pastel and chalk will add highlights. You can also blend things in with your finger and it will smudge it and it will make it look softer. So as I work, I smudge it in with my finger and it softens the harsh line. Now here's the fun part. It's adding pops of color to the flowers and details. I add pops of color using Sharpie, paint, oil pastel, or chalk. I've added some baby's breath with paint, but now I'm going to go in and cast a shadow from my vase. The opposite of the sun, so if the sun is shining from the right top corner, then a shadow will be cast. You just do that very quickly with an oil pastel that's a bit darker. So I used a darker blue and a gray, rubbed it into my painting, and it cast a shadow. It looks like a shadow now. And I'm adding highlights to my yellow flower. In fact, if I were to go back and do that again, I would make them bright yellow because the sun is coming from that right corner and I don't like the darkness. But you can always go back and change that. I'm seeing that now. But when you're making it, there's lots of room for mistakes and to fix it later. I like to highlight with Sharpie. You don't have to. You can highlight with gold or white. You can bring out those flowers with um, harsher lines or you can keep them soft. Sometimes they look nice without any black at all and sometimes they look great if you want to draw them out with some pops of darker color. Technically, black is best for the inside of the flower and not really the outside of the petals, but it's yours, so make it what you want. And right now, I'm just, you're going to see me go in and add the fun parts. So I'm gonna fast forward this and you can see how I've done that. You can do it similarly or you can do it the way you want. That's the beauty, it's yours. So I will go around and help you if you have questions and offer suggestions, but as you look at your painting, maybe step away and look at it and observe where could it use a little bit more? What could it, what could it use? How could I bring something out? And you'll notice later I've actually added a flower to this because it looked like something was missing. So I'll fast forward this and you'll see what I did to change it and add pops to it. 